Hi, I'm Deborah Kruger. I'm one of the artists in the North Carolina Artist Show that's currently at the Contemporary Art Museum in Raleigh, CAM. Um, I wish I could show you the piece that's in the show, but uh, as most museums in the United States are now closed, I thought I would take you into my studio instead and show you some of the steps, the many steps that go into making this work. So here we go. We're going to start with, I make all the feathers in my work with fused, recycled plastic bags, which sounds kind of odd, but they end up making a very nice effect. So we start by fusing, and we take three layers of plastic bags. We put them in between glassine paper so that the plastic doesn't melt, and we apply a hot, dry iron, and it fuses them and they end up being these sheets, about like this. Um, because they're plastic and because we're silk screening, we have to also prime them. So we do both sides, we prime both sides and we get ready for the silk screening. So most of my work is about endangered birds and endangered languages. So the next uh, part of the work is developing the imagery that's going to be on the silk screens. So a lot of the images of the drawings come out of drawings that I do of endangered birds and I'll just show you a few of them. This is the California condor. This is the Madagascar serpent eagle. This is the crazy looking secretary bird which you can also see some of these on my line of merchandise that I also make. And you can find that on savethebirdsdesign.com. So these images of the drawings are distilled and developed into simpler, more graphic images that we create silk screens from. So here behind me on the wall, here's an example of a positive image um, that features in part um, of the flycatcher. And then this is the negative of it. So you can see that we get two very, very different looks. We also use, we became aware in the course of our research that there's many, many thousands of languages around the world that are also endangered. And as we lose endangered languages, we're, using the, we're losing the cultures because culture is embedded in language. So we're slowly working with linguists and, and um, collecting endangered languages. So I have a few examples to show you here. This, these three, Soke, Totsil, and Yakme, are all languages that are currently spoken, but not by many people, in the state of Chiapas in Mexico. And these are ancient Mayan languages. Um, this is shorthand, which a lot of people will recognize, but nobody uses that anymore, so it's endangered. And this is Yiddish. Um, although Yiddish is still spoken in uh, Hasidic communities as, as a language as it once flourished, that, that is no longer the case, and that was the language of my parents. It was their mother tongue, so I have a special affinity towards that. So we'll take these again and develop silk screens. And we overprint, in many cases, the images of the text on top of the images of the endangered birds. So one thing I wanted to show you is that I create colors of the sheets by fusing together the three layers I mentioned earlier about the recycled um, plastic bags. And this is my recipe book. So if I like a particular color, I can reproduce it by going back to my recipe book and seeing how did I make that color. Because whatever's on the bottom, as it fuses together and melts together, it changes the, co the color. And you can see that can be quite dramatic. I also base a lot of my pieces on maps. Conflagration, which is in the show, is based on a state. In the country of Mexico, the state is called San Luis Potosí and there's a very high uh, number of endangered birds in this state. Um, so I chose it. I also like the shape of it. That's important to me. And um, as you see the finished piece, 
you'll see the map on which it's based. After we've printed the sheets, and here's an example, actually we print both sides. So here you see images of the birds with an overprint, and another element that we have is thread that is sewn on here. So I have decisions to make each time is, you know, what color thread am I going to use? In this case, you can see that I chose a gold color thread, but I have different colors. It's very subtle, but somehow over the course of the piece, that's another element, and I love that the fiber element that I'm able to reintroduce by um, sewing this design. So once we have our sheets, we have to cut out our feathers. So we have a template that we put over the sheet, and I have an assistant who takes a marker and, and uh, traces the shapes and then cuts them out. So that's how we get our shapes. So I wanted to show you the final product in terms of the feathers. Um, we create boxes of feathers by color. So here you see a box of red, and here's a box of blue. But in each case, as I mentioned, there's something printed on the back. So in my labeling, these are the these are the colors and the colorways that are on top that are showing. But these are the colorways that if I pick these up and flip them over, that would be on the back. And sometimes if I'm working with black feathers, I need what's on the back. And I don't need the red. And the same with these blue ones. I have lots of interesting blues, but if you flip them over, I have some uh, beige colors, tan colors that I need. Um, oh, and here's some reds on the back of these. So my labeling helps organize me uh, in terms of choosing the colors that I'm then using on the feathers. So I wanted to say also that I would not be able to do the scale work that I do without the help of a lot of other people. So I wanted to dispel that like artist working alone in her studio. Um, maybe some people do, but I am not one of those people. So I have a full-time assistant named Sandra and she really helps me with everything, not just the making of the work, but writing grants and creating images and refining those images and developing images for our merchandise line and a million other things like that. Um, then I have Tyler who manages the website, helps with social media and knows a great deal about social media marketing so she's a really valuable member of our, my team. And then you, you'll also see um, some images of Alicia. She's one of the other assistants that comes in part-time to actually, in many cases, work on the pieces, do the gluing of the pieces, pinning of the pieces, um, just a lot of moving parts. Um, I have a colleague named Dana um, who helps fabricate the sculptures that we make. Um, so I just uh, wanted to introduce you to some of those of my key players uh, in addition to, uh, of course, the work that I do. So I wanted to show you how I attach the feathers to the background, but let me first introduce you to my background. So this is actually another piece that I'm starting also based on a map. Um, but this that you're seeing here is Pelon. It's a really thick pellon, the kind of stuff that when you used to make uh, like man tailor shirts, it would like keep the collar stiff. So this is a very thick one, and we use this uh, to build the pieces on two. And the first thing we do is we screen print the pellon, and in this case, it's screen printed with excerpts of Rachel Carson Silent Spring. She's like totally my muse and inspiration. And then because this particular piece was going to be in these mahogany colors. Um, I had my assistants rub color into the background so that if the feathers, if there's a gap in the feathers, the background becomes sort of integrated into the piece. So here's my little um, demo. 
I'll just put this down. So we take the feather and we take a fusible tape, maybe like a Wonder Under kind of product or a Stitch Witchery. I think you may have heard of that. We put the feather on that, but I can't iron this because it's plastic and it would melt. So I have a barrier of um, glassine paper and I put that on and then I take this cute little iron and I apply some heat. Doesn't take more than a couple of seconds. And then I take off my paper and then the feather is adhered. And here I'll just show you, mm, here, let me just unpin a couple of these. And you can see I'm pulling on them. They're not gonna come off. I mean, if I had to pull them off, because I didn't like the way they were positioned, I could cut them off, but at least they won't ever fall off, and that's important to me. So that's how we attach the feathers to the background and the palette. Thanks for coming to visit me at my studio. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, you can write to me through my website, DeborahKruger.com. There are more videos on my YouTube channel, which you can join. And if you love my art but can't afford original art, please visit SaveTheBirdsDesign.com where I have other merchandise that is artist designed and I think you would find something there that would please you or make a good, great gift. Um, please support your local museums, especially Contemporary Art Museum, CAM and Raleigh. And let's hope that um, the virus and pandemic um, calms down and that we could all go back to the museum and see the show again before it closes in late August. Thanks so much.